This is Plus Politics. With Nigeria's confirmed COVID-19 cases surpassing 12,000 and the death toll hitting 342, the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 has said the country may just be starting to experience the epidemic. The PTF lamented on Nigerians were avoiding being tested, a situation which he said was responsible for the low testing ratio to the population. And on the international scene, the World Health Organization, the WHO, has stated that the coronavirus pandemic situation was worsening around the globe as it warned against complacency. Joining us to discuss this is Chimeze Uche, a medical practitioner via Zoom. Thank you, Dr. Uche, for joining us on the show tonight. My pleasure. Um, it, it's a honor being here. Thank you for inviting much. me. All right. The World Health Organization has stated that the coronavirus pandemic situation was worsening around the globe. But with many countries coming out of the lockdown now, what can you say is a solution to this? Well, again, I want to say thank you for this um, opportunity. You're welcome. Um, I, I, I don't know if I have such authority to declare what the solution would be, but I'm so sure that um, I'm convinced that um, WHO and globally and then locally NCDC, I, I want to believe that they're on top of the game. Um, and and um, so if they advise us, I, I think we should all align with their counsel uh, and do as advised. Um, it's um, sad that we still we still don't have our life back as it were. But thank God for so many of the trainings we're having, so many of the um, information we're having about living the new normal. So, so I think that we should just align with what WHO has say, uh, what they're saying at the center. And then we hope that um, sooner than later, we'll be able to live through or live by with this uh, pandemic. Interestingly, during the lockdown imposed by President Buhari, uh, there were various reactions and views asking that Nigeria get its own homegrown solutions. Now, if Nigeria were to have one, how do you think this will pan out? Well, it would be, it would be interesting if we have a solution to curb um, this menace. Um, again, we shouldn't just have a solution because we think that other countries are seeking their solution or are seeking help um, um, within. Um, we heard how the Madagascar story is spanned out. Um, uh, and, do, and, and do it properly. Thank God for the, um, um, the various regulatory bodies, pharmaceuticals and the medical research labs that are working day and night to ensure that something comes up um, um, over the days or weeks. Um, it would be nice that we have our own solution, like I already said, but then if we have to do it, I would, I would enjoy that we do it very well because, hey, life here is really at stake. Now, the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, um, PTF, lamented that Nigerians were avoiding being tested. What factors could be responsible for this? I mean, isn't it better to know if you have the virus to treat it? I, I, I remember listening to... I'm, I'm down here southeast. Um, and I, hear, I, I remember listening to a radio program earlier today. The two young ladies said, that, hey, look... We are all. We all have this virus already. We should just. We should just. Um, um, we should just believe we all have it already. Again, that's that's not so good. That's not good. A belief we should just carry. Why the is also trying to spread hope. SDC is also doing that locally. Um, it will be nice that we give ourselves to testing factors again. Um, um, not limited, but then you look at stigmatization. How people respond. To, um, to, to people who are, who are afflicted of, uh, uh, by, by disease. You, you know, that's number one. Then number two, again, there's still some, some atom of fear in people. People still think that, hey, um, um, again, enlightenment, one, and people still feel that, look, it's better they, they live their life um, um, out of sheer, sheer ignorance, okay? It's better to live their life that way, not knowing that they have the disease, that they, they, they have the disease, and then it will almost lead to death. Again, I, um, um, it's, that's, that's, that's sad on, on another end again. That, that's also sad. But um, it will be nice that people open themselves and give themselves for, uh, for testings. Um, because at time, at least it's been shown, that um, people have been discharged, discharged um, and certified fit. Okay, not having the virus again. That means that if you're infected, if you give yourself to testing, if you're infected, you can be treated. We still hear, and it's still confirmed, that the that is not the disease is not as deadly as we think. We still have 98% chance of survival. 
So I want to I want to encourage everyone, regardless of what you feel, regardless of whether tribe, religion bias, or ethnic bias, please give yourself a testing. I want to encourage us to do more testing. Let's find out if we are if we, if you're affected. So be it. We go to the isolation centers or treatment centers, get treated, and then go back to our life. Now, lastly, Dr. Chimese, it has been seen that many people are not observing the social distancing and face marks rule as, as put in place by the PTF. Now, many still believe it is not real. How would you rate the information dissemination of the virus at this point in time? Now, that is, now the truth is, it's sad that at this point in time, people are still thinking this COVID-19 stuff is not real. Um, I've, I've seen people move about anyhow, allow me to use that word loosely here in the Southeast, until, until it was publicized that the governor of Idea State got infected some days, some days ago. And then we see here um, strange disease in Onisha, strange this and that. Hey, that's, it, it's so poor. The disease is here. And some, some people say it's here to stay. It, it's here. Um, I think SCDC is doing so well, this disability information. People, again, still counter the fact that how come they're spending billions sending SMS? The SMS has stopped because I've not received any lately. But I think they've done well in disseminating information. I mean, the information is everywhere. It's everywhere. It's real. There's a disease called coronavirus. There's a disease called that. Okay? Um, um, and people should not just get oblivious of the fact that, hey, somebody came and said it mimics symptoms or signs and symptoms of malaria. No. This disease exists. Um, we have treatment protocol for it. We have standard protocols for it. Please, you get... Um, allow yourself to be tested. If you are tested and detected positive, hey, move to the treatment center, get treated, and you get better. All right, I want to. I want to appeal to all Nigerians. Look, this thing is real. It's killing people. People are dying. Okay. Um, yeah, I know we're, we're a very religious country, but then it's happening. Let's give ourselves to testing and then get treated. Thank you, Doctor Chimeze Uche. It's been a pleasure having you join us on the show tonight, and thank you for your contribution. Thank you so much. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus report now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. The usual hustle and bustle in Lagos, Nigeria. It is 8.55 a.m. on a Monday morning in Africa's commercial nerve center, and it is four weeks post-COVID-19 lockdown Workers at the Aja area of Lagos, using commuter buses, make their way to work. Drivers now have to carry half the initial number of commuters to curb the spread of the coronavirus disease. And for some passengers, they almost doubled how it confess it's too much a price to pay. From Aja to CMS, 400, in which we're paying 300 naira, 250 before, 200. Now it's now 400, which is very, very high. Before we carry 18, 5, 500. Now 7, 700 naira, and we carry 9. And as officers of the Lagos State Transportation Management Authority attempt to ensure physical distancing in buses, there are drivers who would stop at nothing to carry a full load. We are told off camera that these are military personnel and as such seem untouchable. This bus is one of such. Putting on a face mask is gradually becoming the new culture that you would have to pick up if you live in Lagos. But these kinds of banters often play out. Here about this coronavirus, they are killing and arresting. We have not seen anybody that showed to us in Lagos who he has killed. People that he has killed, let us see dead that these people have, have died by coronavirus. So I will know that yet truly this sickness is effective in the nation in Nigeria. Some drivers literally have to fight with passengers over the mandatory use of face masks. If I didn't pursue him, the last man will arrest me. They say, why did I tell the passengers to use their nose cover? It is a step further as Dotung is not allowed to board a tricycle. The reason is because he has no face marks on. They asked me to go out from the KK because of the nose marks. Okay, so did you forget your nose marks? Yes, I forgot my nose marks. As the number of COVID-19 cases spike up to over 12,000 cases in Nigeria, and almost 400 deaths, what would happen to public buses which continue to endanger the lives of Lagos residents? 
when it comes to enforcing COVID-19 safety mechanism, that is distancing and wearing face mask. Last month, officer, once they see that there's, a, there's an issue or someone is not wearing, they will stop the vehicle and they will ask the passenger, first of all, why are you not wearing a mask? It's against the rule. And so you either come out of the vehicle or you arrest the driver or you impound the vehicle. From Lagos, Nigeria, Mary Chinda for Plus TV Africa. President Mohamed Buhari, after granting the autonomy on May 22, which mandated the state governors to always include the allocations of the legislature and the judiciary in the first line charge of their budgets, will now turn around to agree to the delay of the implementation of the executive order, tend given by the expressed concerns of the governors. With many Nigerians expressing their concerns and doubts as to why, I do share in the belief that the new executive order 10, if implemented, will ensure a balanced federation with distribution of powers, and this will also grant financial independence to the judiciary and accord it with the notion of separation of powers. More importantly, the order will go a long way in consolidating democracy and strengthening the independence of the judiciary and the legislature at the state level. While such an executive order demonstrates federal government's will to facilitate the implementation of the new constitutional provisions, I want to urge the state legislature to work in line with the provisions of the Constitution and not to abuse the new powers granted them by the President under the new executive order then. No doubt, this order will further make state legislatures independent of the executive arm of their various governments. It will also boost healthy competitions among state legislatures in pursuit of advancement and development. And that's my take. Thank you for staying with us. More interesting conversations on PLOS Politics returns tomorrow evening, same time. Have a great evening. My name is Benny Ock.